say. Uh, did you guys all have good days? Did you guys do anything interesting today? And uh, Victor, like, how was your day? Just a normal day? Normal day, yes. Work and uh, driving and uh, uh, nothing uh, unusual. <laughs> nothing unusual, okay, fantastic. And Lynn, <laughs> how was your day? Uh, the same as usual. Uh, same as usual. In the morning, I stay at home to do some to do. I stay at home to do some homework, mm -hmm. and then in the afternoon, I went to my class. Mm -hmm. And after having dinner, uh, I meet I meet you in Colingo. Uh huh. Fantastic. So, uh, was your class also? Uh, was it a class for English or was it a class for something else? Uh, yes, uh, I took some English class in my hometown to to improve my English. Uh huh. Fantastic. So you're taking classes both outside Colingo and also on Colingo. That's great. Mm, yes. Awesome. And Rafaela, how was your day? Uh, my day was fine. Uh, it's about. Uh, uh, midday here, so. Uh huh. What are you? Fr are you from Brazil? Yes. Ah, fantastic! Welcome. Tudo beleza? What? Tudo beleza? Ah, tudo beleza. <laughs> I only I only know one phrase one phrase in Portuguese, so that's the one I'm saying. I don't know any Portuguese. Uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah. It's okay. Awesome, awesome. That's great. So, uh, yeah. What part of Brazil are you from? I am from Minas Gerais state. Minas Gerais, it's, okay. It's a state close to Sao Paulo and the Rio state. Uh-huh, awesome. Are you from, I have a, one friend from Minas Gerais state. Uh, she's from Belo Horizonte. Uh, okay, but Belo Horizonte is in the north uh -huh. of the state and I am in the south. You're in the south, cool, cool. Awesome, awesome. And also, I know because I, I have some friends from Brazil. Is your name pronounced Rafaela or Rafaela? Uh, Rafaela, the first one. It's pronounced Rafaela, right? Okay, so uh, yeah. I will try. I will try to do that because I know that I make that mistake. I say Rafael instead of Rafael or Rafaela. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Rafaela. Uh, and Ken, how's it going? Good to see you. Oh, yeah, good to see you. Uh, yes, I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you. Nice, nice. Awesome, awesome. So we have a good group here. We have four of you guys. We also have me. Um, and we have one person viewing. So uh, hello to the person who's viewing also. Uh, and let's get started, guys. Um, we do have a little, bit of a, a little bit of a longer class today. Uh, but the article is going to be interesting. So the subject that we are going to be talking about today is we are going to be discussing the past continuous, right? The past continuous tense in English, how that is used, how can we make it, and how do we use it, right? And then in the second part of the class, we are going to be looking at actually um, more of a travel-related article. It's going to be about uh, the world's most beautiful universities um, in terms of their the, the locations, you know, the scenery of these different universities, the buildings, maybe the architecture, Right, so it's going to be something interesting to, to see. And also, Rafaela, since you are new to the class, I want to let you know that anytime you have any questions, if I'm speaking too quickly, if I'm speaking very slowly, if you, if you have any questions about anything, or if you want me to stop, just let me know. Sounds okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Obrigado, obrigado. Uh, so, all right, guys, let's get started. Uh, when we look at the past continuous tense, right, what do we mean by past continuous? The past continuous means that we are talking about an action that started in the past and is really no longer taking place, but it was it's something that started in the past, right? Um, and you can say, for example, I was uh, learning English um, last night at 6 p.m., right? I was learning English at 6 p.m. last night. 
So we're, we are talking about an action that started in the past that was continuing at whatever time that you mention, right? So we can't, it's better to always include some time component to the, our past continuous, right? I was working. If you say I was working, okay, you were working, which means that you were, you were doing a continuous action in the past, right? It, it wasn't just I worked. The difference between I worked and I was working is I worked had a definite beginning and a definite ending, right? If you say I was working, then it means that it was a it was a continuous task. It was happening over some period of time, right? So if I say I was working last night, then you understand, okay, for some part of last night, maybe for a few hours last night, maybe for, you know, some time, I was working, right? You were in that continuous action. So how do we create this past continuous, right? It's pretty simple. We take the subject, and then we have the verb either was or were, right? The verb was would be for I was, he was, she was, right? And the verb were what would be for you were, uh, they were, and we were, right? So it depends on the subject. It depends completely on the subject, which one of these you use. And then we go... Then we choose another verb and just end end that verb with ing, right? So we have the subject, then we have was or were, you know, depending on our subject, and then we have a verb that ends in ing, right? So it's an action that you were doing in the past. It wasn't something you did for just one second. It wasn't something that you started and finished, right? It was something that you were actually working on, something that you were doing for more than, something that you were doing for some time. Right. Any questions, guys, on the beginning, on this, just this first part here, learning about how to make it and what, what it is? No questions? Ken? Lynn? Rafaela? Victor? No. Okay, sounds good. So then, let's get started, guys, with the next part then. I want to ask you guys how to make this sentence, I want you guys to make a past continuous phrase uh, using any subject, any verb that you want, right? Let's start with Ken on the left, please. Ken, are you there? Uh, I muted, sorry. Oh, no worries, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was... Uh taking, uh, I was having some nap in the afternoon. I was taking a nap in the afternoon. A taking, a taking nap. Yeah, so having you want to use nap. having, no, yeah, you want to use taking, I'm right? Taking I was nap. taking a nap in the afternoon, right? Lynn, when Ken says that, what do you think when you hear that? I was taking a nap. Was he, did he nap for a very brief amount of time or was it a little bit longer? Lynn, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh-huh. Do you want me to re-ask my question? Ask my question another time? I was asking, if, if Ken says, I was taking a nap, right, then does that mean that he was sleeping for just a, f uh, just a little bit of time or maybe some significant amount of time, maybe a longer amount of time? Which one do you think it is, since it's the past continuous? Um, just a little time. Uh huh. It could be honestly. It could be right. The past continuous, unless you give a duration, unless you actually say, "I was sleeping from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. last night," right? Unless we, unless we are that specific, it it's it could go either way. Maybe he was napping for a little bit of time. Maybe he was napping for a longer time, right? But usually, when we look at the past continuous because we are talking about something that is that was a continuous action, right? It didn't just begin and end. We we also may it's also equally possible that this was something that he did for a long time, right? So Ken, if you could provide a time example, well, that would be great. How could you maybe add a time component to your sentence? Mm -hmm. mm, maybe 
uh, I was uh, I was taking a nap for a Does it make sense? I'm sorry, Ken, you actually broke up at the last second. I didn't hear the last part of your I, sentence. Yeah. I was having a nap for a while. For I a was, while. I was taking a nap for a while. Right? Yeah. I was I was taking a nap for a while. So that would be that would be in that case, Lynn, right? It would be for a longer period of time because he's telling you for a while, right? I was taking a nap for a while, right? So I think that's really good. Lynn, could you give us an example of a sentence using the past continuous? Um, um, I was watching television. Te I was watching television when the phone rang. Mhm. Mm I was watching television when the phone rang. Fantastic. So, Lynn, you are actually already at the next level, right? You are so. The way that we're using past continuous right now, when it's just saying. I was doing something, I was taking a nap, whatever. That's just one form, and that's the basic form of using the past continuous, right? The more advanced form of using the past continuous is to use the past continuous to describe how two events in the past were related, right? Oh, when and yes. Yeah, go ahead, Lynn. Can I turn my, uh, my sentence? Uh, your sentence was perfect. Did you want to say something else? No, I I know um, because I just want to obey. Uh, I just want to focus on the the point that you mentioned about um, past continuous. Uh huh. Which which point? I I said a lot of I, things, I mean, Lynn. Uh, uh, I mean that I want to uh, have another sentence that related to the uh, the past continuous. That uh -huh. you mentioned before. Okay, so the one I mentioned before to Ken was if you are using just the past continuous, you can also include a time, and that way people know a little bit easier how long the action was, right? If you want, because for example, short versus long amount of time, it's hard to tell unless you have a time component, right? So if I say I was taking a, I was taking a bath from 1 p.m. to to 3 p.m. Right? That's a two-hour bath. That's a long bath, right? But if I just say I was taking a bath for five minutes, then it's just five minutes, right? So both of those are in the past continuous, but if you include a time component, then we know if it's long or short, right? So your sentence was perfect, but we were using another form of, of your sentence. We were using um, past continuous combined with the simple past, which is what we are going to look at in a few minutes. So you were fine, Lynn. I mean, did you... Did you have any questions about something else? No. Okay, perfect. No, I mean, you did a great job, right? So Lynn said, for example, I was... I'm sorry, Lynn, could you repeat your sentence? I forgot, I forgot the two verbs that you used. I was watching TV when the phone rang. I was watching TV when the phone rang, right? Fantastic. So this is the next step that we are getting to, guys. You are talking about an action that's, that happened just one time. It interrupted your continuous action in the past, right? You were doing something. I was, uh, uh, you know, listening to music when my mother came home, right? That's how we use the past continuous, right? In a, in a more effective way. Fantastic. But so far, we're not looking at that. I just want you guys to make one sentence in the past continuous. Uh, so, Rafaela, please go ahead. I was taking care of my pet. In the morning. I was taking care of my pet in the morning, right? Fantastic. What kind of pet is it? Uh, I don't have a pet, just example. Oh, oh fantastic. Okay, great, great, great. That's, that's a smart way to answer a question, just to use any example. I was taking care of my pet in the morning. Fantastic. We don't know how long, we don't know how, how much time, but we can surmise, we can guess that maybe it was for some time, right? And Victor, last but not least, an example of the past continuous. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, I was driving my car yesterday all the day. Fantastic. I was driving my car yesterday all day, right? All day. Just all day, yeah. You're, the, the sentence was perfect, Victor, except for just all day, right? I was driving my car yesterday all day. 
if Victor says that, Rafaela, was he driving for just a few hours or was he driving for a longer time? Uh, he was driving for a longer time. Absolutely, right? Because he says all day, right? So he's indicating with, it, with that time component, he's indicating how long he was doing this action, right? Fantastic, fantastic. You guys all did very, 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 very well. So the next part of this lesson, I'm going to focus on the past continuous combined with a simple past, which is what we saw in Lynn's example. Before I move on, any questions about what we did so far? We're okay? Great. So what Lynn was saying was, was perfect, right? When we are talking about a past continuous and then another event comes in and interrupts it, right? We use a combination of this past continuous as well as the simple past, right? So, and you can use as many past continuous parts of the sentence as you want. You know, you honestly don't have to say anything that is, you know, that you, you don't have to limit yourself to just one phrase in the past continuous. I was watching TV and my sister was, you know, listening to music when my mother came home, right? I used two components. I was, com I was watching TV and my sister was listening to music when my mother came home. Suddenly my mother came home or it was just one time in the past that my mother came home. Simple past. So come becomes came, right? Um, so here, in this combination, let me just quickly write this down, right? We have the construction involves simple con uh, past continuous, which would be, you know, the subject plus the verb, or subject plus uh, was or were, and then a verb with ing, plus a simple past, right? That's all we're looking at. That is all we're looking at, okay? Could you, could you guys give me an example of a sentence in this format? Uh, let's start with Ken again, please, on the left. Okay. Uh, the sales, a, sales, a salesman was calling me when I attended the Kalinga class. Mm-hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. So you actually did a, did a very creative job there, Ken, right? A salesman mm -hmm. was calling me when I attended the Colingo class. So by by listening to that, what I think is the salesman was continuously calling you more than one time and you attended the Colingo class only once. Is that oh, is that what yeah. you meant? Uh no. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, just switch it. I think you have it, you just have to switch it, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to switch the verbs and then you'll be fine. You have to change the form of the verbs. So in the one that is past continuous, make a simple past. Yeah, perfect. I was taking Kalinga. Uh, I was taking a Kalinga class when the salesman called. Fantastic, right? The salesman only called once in in this example, right? This is the this is the most reasonable example. So his which part of the of the sentence that you said, Ken? Which part is the past continuous? I was taking. And which part is the simple past? Uh, cold. Fantastic, right? So that continuous action in the past, you weren't just in Colingo in the Colingo class for one second, right? You were maybe in the class for half an hour, 45 minutes, one hour, right? But the salesman called you only one time, right? Mm -hmm. Now you can also modify this. You can let's say some salesmen when they call, they don't just call me once, they call me all the time, right? Sometimes they make more than one call. So you can say I was taking a Colingo class when uh, when my when the salesman uh, kept calling, right? Mm -hmm. Kept calling. If somebody continues to do something more and more and more and more and doesn't stop, you can say kept calling, right? He mm -hmm. kept calling me. He kept calling me even though I was busy. Mm -hmm. So this is where we can use your original example in a in a more in a more creative way, right? He was calling me even though I was busy, right? So I was busy indicates your status in the past. Mm -hmm. It could be it could have been for you could have been busy for eight hours, ten hours, eleven hours, right? That's one example when we don't need to use the past continuous, but we can still talk about our status, right? I am busy. 
okay, no one's asking you for how long or when you'll not be busy. No, I'm busy, whatever. End of the deal, right? So the guy kept calling me even though I was busy, right? Fantastic. But your example was great. Your example was great. Uh, Lynn, could we get an example from you, please? Um, I was walking home when I met my old friend. I was walking home when I met my old friend. Fantastic. I was walking home when I met my old friend, right? So which part of that sentence is in the past continuous, Lynn? Uh, I was walking home. Fantastic. And which part is in the simple past? Oh, uh, I met my old friend. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great job. Rafaela, could you give us an example, please? I was looking for my phone, but I couldn't find it. I was looking for my phone, but I couldn't find it. You know, that's fantastic. That's great use of the word, right? But in this example, you are actually saying kind of the result of your action, right? And in the, in the other examples, which is perfectly fine, Rafael, right? But really, the past continuous, when we use past continuous in this way, we are saying that something happened, something interrupted your continuous action, right? Something, something happened one time, simple past, and it interrupted your continuous action. So if you're saying, but I couldn't find it, you're saying, oh, but I was unsuccessful in finding it, right? So it's almost a result of looking for your phone, right? Could you give us another example of when a simple past comes in and interrupts a continuous action, or it happens in the middle of a continuous action? Okay. Um, I was looking for my phone when my mother called me. Fantastic, fantastic, right? And if your mother called you on your cell phone, then maybe you found your cell phone, right? So that would be the best example, right? This, you hear the sound, you go to the phone, and you find your phone, right? Great job. When my when I was looking for my cell phone, my mother called me, right? And Victor, last but not least, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I was swimming in my pool, and my wife was cooking for me, and uh, my children were gaming. Uh, with each other when my mother law arrived. Fantastic. You had <laughs> three or four different types of past continuous in that sentence, which is great, right? I was swimming in the pool, my wife was cooking, my kids were playing, and my and my children were playing when my mother in law came home or arrived at our at our home. I Fantastic. Don't sure, I don't sure about uh, my children were gaming with each other or my, my children were playing with each other. Playing, uh -huh. playing with each other. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. That's a very good question, right? My children were playing with each other, right? You can say they were playing games with each other, or you can say they were playing with each other. Both of them are good, right? Awesome. Guys, any questions on this, on everything we've looked at so far? Past continuous versus simple past versus definition of past continuous, how we use all of these examples. Any questions? You guys are so loud, I can't believe it. I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Come on, you guys need to speak a little all, bit. Okay. All clear. All, all clear. clear. When, when, all you, clear. when you speak. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All clear. Good to go. Um, but oh. when we when we speak, it's not clear. <laughs> no, that's not a problem. You're learning, Victor. That's the entire example, right? So, awesome. Awesome, guys. Fantastic. I like this. So, if we are all okay with this grammar lesson, I want to take some time and look at this article that we are going to talk about today. The world's most beautiful universities, right? So it's not really a very uh, word or vocabulary focused article. We There are a lot of pictures, right? Because we want to see how beautiful these universities are. So I'm going to go ahead and start the article, uh, put the article link here. And if you guys could uh, just click the link and uh, we'll get started. I'm also going to screen share so we can all see it. All right. So, the world's most beautiful universities, right? And let's see what they say in the first part. There's a little bit of an article that I'm just going to read very briefly. So this looks like a very beautiful scene in, 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 my, in my book. This is the perfect picture of autumn, of fall. The leaves are beautiful. The sun is shining, you know. So... Uh, this is actually the University of Virginia, 
uh, in uh, the southern part of the United States. So let's see here. Let's read. Let's start reading from the word "some" here, right? Some universities choose to embrace. Embrace means to to accept something. If you're embracing something, you are accepting it, right? Some student universities choose to accept more modern architectural and design elements on their campuses, perhaps to signify their evolving relationship with schooling, right? So it's saying here. Some universities, they want to include the more modern technology, the more modern architecture, the more modern design in their buildings because that's something that they, that they enjoy, right? Um, newer universities like Nanyang Technological University in Singapore often showcase striking contemporary structures by today's star architects, right? So this university in Singapore really has a lot of beautiful culture. Right, really has a lot of beautiful architecture, and it's present-day architecture. When we hear contemporary, the word contemporary means present-day, right? Currently available, currently available architecture, right? Um, and you know these kinds of uh, designs have won lots of awards, right? And then still, other universities put as much design focus on their green spaces as they do their buildings, right? So. A lot of other universities, they like to focus on all aspects of their architecture, not just the buildings, but the parks, the maybe the other green spaces. You know, green spaces here we mean, you know, any, anywhere that's green, maybe lawns outside or parks and things like that, right? Um, one example they give us is the University of Western Australia at Perth has pine trees surrounding the auditorium, ponds and gardens, with an amphitheater. An amphitheater is kind of like a, a more ancient uh, design, but it's an open-air theater, right? And this is used for dance and music performances. So here we read about how universities are embracing their green spaces. They're making their green spaces into beautiful designs. Here we read about the modern, right? This, this paragraph talks about the modern aspects of um, universities. And we also, at the beginning, see that there are traditional designs of universities, right? Traditional architecture. So the one university they mentioned is Trinity. It's saying Trinity University in Ireland fits our traditional idea of what a college campus should look like, right? University designs, after all, are deeply tied to a nation's history and identity, right? So we are going to see three different types of architecture in these, in these pictures, guys. So this first one right here, University of Virginia, what do you guys think about this picture when you look at it? Is it, it, is it a beautiful school? Large campus. Yeah, it's a large campus, right? Yeah. Rafaela, what do you think about this picture? I think it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is very beautiful, right? Uh, Lynn, would you, would you want to take pictures of this campus? Would you like to walk around here and enjoy this, the scenery? Of course, yeah, it's beautiful, right? I really like this picture, especially the sun in the back. Um, what would you say, uh, um, Victor? What would you say about this one? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful sight. It is very beautiful, right? Yeah, I, I do, beautiful. absolutely, right? I do want to see. Were there other photos in this article, or did I just make a mistake? Oh, okay, it's right here. I was going to say. Um, Guys, let me send you this link as well, so that we have. You guys have that second link. That's that actually has the pictures. That first article didn't have the pictures. So let's wait until this guy gets started. I wanted to take a look at see some of these universities instead of just the University of Virginia. Okay, it's taking some time. Is there maybe a faster way? Um, okay, this one is an opening. Let me also try to open this one up. America's most beautiful college campuses. Maybe that one is going to be a little bit better. Sometimes these magazines are not updated very frequently, so I think maybe their links are their links expire. 
Honestly, I'm not sure. While we do that, I'm going to start doing this too. Okay. Yeah, this magazine is just not working for us today. Um, okay, I think we're just going to go to this this article, guys, because Huffington Post is a little bit better article, or a better newspaper. I think they maintain their links better. Um, just give me one second, guys. Okay. So, okay, this one hopefully has pictures that we can look at. Uh, okay, yep, this one has pictures. All right, guys, sorry about the wait. Uh, let us take a look at this last link instead. We are going to go to the Huffington Post article instead of the article that I had originally, right? So this article is from a different newspaper, Huffington Post, but it's really the same idea, right? We are looking at with the world's most beautiful universities according to this uh, this newspaper, right? So the first one is the University of Cambridge, right? Very, very famous university in in the um, in England. And would you guys say this is traditional, modern, or um, somewhere in between? Traditional. Traditional. Yeah, this is very traditional, right? It, it says that it's from the 13th century, so it's it was started 700 years ago. This university was established a long time ago, right? Lynn, what do you think about this university just by looking at it? Uh, I am surprised a bit about the scenery of um, this university. And of course, you know, this one is my big dream even since I was even since I was a student in high school. Uh huh. So I, your dream was to go to here, to go to Cambridge? Mm. Learning in this Cambridge is not it not in, uh, practical, but I hope mm, I wish I can have chance to go there and take some photo in this uh, campus or mm -hmm. um, Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Fantastic! No, I I agree completely. Right, um, Rafaela, what do you think about the university? Is it nice? Would you like to take pictures here? Um, I lost the connection for a moment. Could you? Yeah, yeah, no problems. Absolutely. I was gonna. I was just asking. Would you uh, like to be at this university as well to take pictures? Do you think it's beautiful? Yes, I, I think it looks beautiful, but it, it also looks like a church. Yeah, right. The architecture is much more traditional, right? And this one right here is the King's College Chapel. So this actually is a church. Rafaela. So this actually is a church and it's part of their part of their campus, right? So you see the modern you see the modern and the traditional, right? This building looks more modern than this building, right? So I like uh, you know, I like how we can see both examples here. Okay, enough about this picture guys. Thanks for your your ideas. The next one here is University of Cape Town, South Africa. What do you guys think about this picture? It's the resort. <laughs> yeah, right? It's a very short building compared to, look at all these mountains in the back, right? I mean, yeah, go ahead, guys. Ken. Kind of the, the brown uh, architecture is mm -hmm. like a dormitory. Mm -hmm. This got these right here, right? Yes. Yeah, those are the dormitories maybe, right? Those are where people, mm. those are where the students live. And what do you think this building is? Rafaela, what do you think this building is? In the middle. Um, where is it? I can't, I can't is see Is it this the... one right here? Oh, uh, do you see my screen by any chance? Uh, no, no, I can't see. Uh-huh. This guy in the middle. Um, I, I think uh, it could be... The administrative center. Yeah, yeah. Why not, right? Maybe it's an administrative center. Maybe it's a location. Maybe maybe it's a lecture hall, right? Maybe it's an auditorium, big auditorium for classes, right? Absolutely. Uh, Victor, what else do you think about this university? Does it look nice? Does it look nicer than Cambridge? Does it? Yes. Uh, I think in the middle of picture, it's a library. <laughs> Yeah, it could be a library as well, right? Fantastic, fantastic. 
Lynn, what do you think about the mountains in the back? Do they add to the to the feel and the architecture, or are they are they bothering you in the picture? Uh, I just confused a bit that whether or not uh, the mountain is real, or just uh, people just want to ask uh, to be uh, to take the picture more vivid and more authentic. Uh huh. So you're asking kind of why they they took a larger picture with the mountains? Yes. Whether I... or not the 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 mountain is uh it real. In this um, university. Yeah, I don't know why, unfortunately, either. But I think the mountain kind of adds to the scenery, right? It makes the place more beautiful, maybe. Right? Because let's say you're walking around here, you know, and you see these beautiful mountains. I would, I would like that. What about you guys? Do you guys not like mountains? Or I'm just joking, but you know, I think it'll be nice to be in a place that has mountains like that, right? Even though the, the picture, in this, in this example, the picture makes it look a little bit more... We don't focus so much on the university. We're focusing more on the surrounding area in this picture, right? Okay, enough about South Africa. Let's move on, guys. This right here, Pepperdine University in California, right? What do you guys think about this picture? I love this picture What because I see something here that I really like. Right? What is the pole? <laughs> Why the pole? I have no idea what this thing is. It's just there. I have no idea, right? Mm. So, but we have. Look at this. Blue skies. Beautiful blue water, right? I mean, and even the buildings. The the colors on the uh, of the buildings are these. You know, this bright white color. You have these orange uh, roofs, and you have this beautiful green lawn, right? What do you guys think about this picture, Rafaela? What do you think about this picture? Um, I, I think the the green in this picture. Looks uh, like uh, the university where I study. Really, but, that's awesome. Yeah, th there's a lot of green here, but the the sea, I think it it, it makes a difference. It um, it looks amazing. Yeah, I really like this picture because I love schools and universities that are near the water. If they if, if they are near the water, then the weather is different. Everything is beautiful. There's always something to do, right? Um, what about the rest of you guys? Victor, Lynn, Ken? Uh, beautiful, beautiful picture, beautiful building, modern buildings. Yeah. I think uh, good roads, uh, many cars, a lot of cars. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. That's it's, great. It's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's awesome. Uh, Lynn, do you agree with Victor? Uh, yes, I totally agree with, with him. But um, when I first look, uh, when I first look at the picture, I think this um, the architecture, the architecture of this university also focused mainly on green space with a lot of tree, and the location is also convenient because uh, it's near the sub on the highway. Uh huh. Absolutely right. The location is very convenient. It's near. It has you know major roads nearby, and it it makes use of all this green within its architecture, right? And the. Um, yes, but um, where is the dormitory? I have no idea where the dormitory is. Honestly, it could be. I think these look like maybe classroom buildings. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a library. I really have no idea. Um, maybe there's other buildings around here that, you know, um, are, are other buildings. Uh, Victor, I'm sorry, did you want to say something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't see on this picture a trash. <laughs> trash. <laughs> yeah, there's no... Is it, it, is it Photoshop? <laughs> uh, I don't know, Victor. That's a great question, right? But it's, it's a very clean place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, right? It's a very clean place. It doesn't seem to be anything, anything out of place, you know. This, look at this lawn. I mean... I used to, when I was in high school, I used to mow lawns. For, that was my job, right? I used to go to people's homes, go to offices. I would mow lawns, and they would pay me maybe you know, $25 for every lawn. To get a lawn mowed like this with no you know, issues 
even grass, it's not easy. I mean, I, I know they use the machine, but it's it's still this is extremely beautiful, very well done, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, guys, fantastic. And Ken, do you have any other thoughts about about this school, Pepperdine? Uh, actually, the American campus is maintenance is very well actually. Uh, uh -huh. A gardener, you know, or yeah, a, a kind of part time job for the students, you know, mm -hmm. clean up their campus or plant very often, oftenly. Yeah, so we do that a lot. They keep, they keep, they can keep this kind of scenery. Because the students help, help, right? Kind of part time job, you know, university hired the students. Absolutely or, right. And the you know, is it to. Is yeah, it ahead, California Victor. and uh, we see Pacific Ocean, right? That's right, Victor. Yep, this is the Pacific Ocean. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? My One of my professors actually went to this university, Pepperdine. Um, I, I have never been there, but uh, if I can move to any part of the U.S., I would move immediately to California. It's the most beautiful state. So this is Pepperdine, guys. And... This right here, look at this building. Oh my god. I know this. <laughs> yeah, this building is just unbelievable. Victor, can you tell us about this building? It's Moscow University. It was built, built in uh, in time of ruled uh, Iosif Stalin. Mm -hmm. uh, because this, uh, it's building very, very very hard, very strong, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was uh, thinking uh, that uh, there are uh, all all of cycle of uh, learning students. Uh, there is uh, libraries, uh, there is uh, rooms for living, uh, there is store uh, about. St Doors, uh, all all need for lives. It's not necessary go out from this building. <laughs> wow! So everything is inside. Yes, everything can inside. Yes. That is awesome. But this, guys, when I see this picture, I just feel the power of Russia. Like you know, like this country, you do not want to be ang You don't. You do not want to make this country angry with you. Right? I mean, look at the buildings that they made. This thing looks like a palace. It looks like, you know, a super university. How how tall is this building? Uh, Victor, do you know how tall this is? It looks I, extremely tall, right? I don't know it. <laughs> exactly. But, but it's super tall. I mean, just look at the little cars here at the bottom, right? I mean, this is a massive, massive building. And what's the architecture like here, guys? Is it more traditional? Is it more modern? Is it a mix of the two? For me, it's a mix. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like a mix, right? I agree, yes, it's a mix. And then, how is this area? I mean, what else is around it? I would love to just take so many pictures here. Like, look at these. This We have this reflecting pool here. We have all these ducks. Are these ducks military ducks? Uh, Victor, why are they all in one line, every single one of them? <laughs> look it's at this. This ducks. is... Oh, they're not it's ducks. ducks. <laughs> Sorry. What are it's, they then? Uh, I don't know how it not called. It's water. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay. Spring. Fountains, maybe. Fountains, maybe. Fountains. 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 Yes. Fountains. Fountains. Oh, I thought they were ducks. No wonder, because I was like, <laughs> even the ducks in Russia understand the military, right? Wow. That would, <laughs> that would be amazing. But no, this is these are fountains, right? And that is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, and look at this blue sky, not a cloud in the sky. You have the green, you have the blue, you have the water, you have the ducks, right? Everything is beautiful. This is amazing. All right. Any other any other comments about this? Lynn, what do you think about this university? Uh, whether or not the photographer used too much uh, photo, Photoshop? Really? I think this is it. This is a good picture, not photoshopped here. This looks good. Mm, yes. Yeah. But no, it, it is a beautiful picture, right? Maybe he removed some of the ducks or some of the clouds, you know. But 
No, it's it's really beautiful, right? And guys, this will be the last one we look at, okay? Because we we need to speak a little bit after this lecture as well. University of Otago in New Zealand. This is in New Zealand. What do you guys think about this picture? I love this picture. Oh, kind of European style. Mm -hmm. But the tree seems like cherry blossom tree for me. Yeah, right? Cherry blossom, maybe it's a Japanese cherry blossom tree. Oh, yeah. Right? Who knows? It could be a... It, they could have taken a Japanese tree to New Zealand, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I don't know. Just maybe every season this university looks different because of the flowers, but this is in the spring, right? I mean, these blossoms are just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just take a look at the this green grass once again right blue sky this architecture looks beautiful and we have these beautiful flowers uh, Victor what's your reaction to this picture uh, when I seen the, this uh, tower <laughs> I I thought about Big Ben in England. yeah Big Ben in England right mm -hmm. yeah no absolutely I think I think the design is is, is you know similar because you know, New Zealand is uh, was part of the British Empire and they have influences mm -hmm. from from the British, right? So absolutely, right? Rafaela, what do you think about this picture? Um, I, I like the, the picture, um, but the I think the tree, uh -huh. the trees are the most um, beautiful things on the picture. Yeah, I think so too. Maybe in the summer, this picture or this area looks more normal because the trees are don't have all their flowers, right? But in the spring, I think this place would be absolutely gorgeous, right? Uh, Lynn, what do you think? Mm, for me, I agree with uh, Victor that uh, the architect, the architecture of uh -huh. this university. Makes makes me think of the Big Bang in the UK, but yes. Uh, however, everything is nice, and mm -hmm. of course, I love I love this one. Yeah, I love this one as well. I don't know which one my favorite is, honestly, guys. But would you guys say that this is a more traditional architectural design or more modern architectural design? Traditional. I think so, absolutely, right? This looks much more traditional. So out of the ones we saw so far, guys, which one did you guys love the most? We have, we had this one at the beginning, Cambridge. We had South Africa. We had California. We had Soviet Russia. And we had University of Otago, right? So we had Moscow State University and University of Otago at the end, right? Which one was your favorite, Ken? Mm, kind of. I, I've experienced several campuses from old campus, new campus, small uh -huh. and large campus. So I, for the convenience, Moscow building style is, I think, very convenient because I can move the class very easily. I can go to the professor's office or library very easily. So I can, I can right. rest during the class. Really, Ken? I don't know. I, I, I love well, your idea. I... <laughs> In American campus, it's pretty large, so I have to take bath to move the classroom from library to dormitory, kind of. So, uh -huh. or many students uh, ride a bicycle or, you know, ba bath, using bus. Uh -huh. So, for convenience, I think this style is, uh, uh, this is convenient, very convenient. <laughs> But you know, Ken, what I, what, I love what you said, I love what you said, but in terms of going to professors easily, can you imagine if you're right here trying to go to a professor who lives here? <laughs> I think, I, or I mean, who, who's, you know, who has his office there, I think it would take me one hour to walk from here to here. <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Victor, is it, is it a big building? It looks like a huge building, oh, right? Quite. Quite big, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no hour, but maybe half an hour. <laughs> maybe half an hour from this side to this side, Ken, yes. right? And I would, I would just walk outside. I would just, I would go down the stairs and walk outside, look at the ducks, and then Actually, go up on it. Uh, new trend happening now. Now, you know, in the past, many, uh, you know, urban university go uh, move to uh, move to suburb, 
for uh-huh. the for searching for the large place for the campus, large campus, but students dislike it because mm-hmm. it's difficult access to the urban side. So some universities turn to the urban side. So the style of uh, they they couldn't get a large round in the urban side, so the kind of a tall building. That's the mm-hmm. university, and maybe there's no so large so so <laughs> so large campus there. Yeah, no, that's mm-hmm. awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, Ken. Um, oh, no, you're welcome. <laughs> Lynn, w- Lynn, which one is your favorite one among these five that we looked at? We have this guy, this guy, California, this guy, and then we had England at the beginning. Which one is your favorite? Um, among these pictures, uh, I love uh, Cambridge and mm-hmm. the Moscow most. However, uh, after after seeing um, after listening to your, your comment about the the toll, the head of Moscow, I afraid that I no longer interested in this uh, <laughs> building because. It's true that I, I mean, that I think uh, whenever you want to um, have, you want to go from the first floor to the top floor, it's yeah. time. So I think I change my mind, and I, w- I want to say, I want to say that I just want to go to Cambridge. Cambridge, fantastic, beautiful, beautiful. So we have one, one win for. Cambridge and uh, one win for Moscow, even though Ken is not sure how long it's going to take to walk from one side to the other. Right? Fantastic. Uh, and then, Rafaela, which one is your favorite? Um, I, I really liked the Moscow University. Really? Everyone's liking Moscow. What's going on? Yeah. But, but I, think, I yeah. think I would prefer to study in University of Virginia because of the the green, you know, there, there's more space. It's not a building. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great point. That was from our from our first picture or from our first article, right? Fantastic. So University of Virginia, right? And a lot of the a lot of the universities in the U.S. actually they have that design. They're larger. They have the green spaces. Um, you know, if they have the land, they you know they make more buildings. So awesome, Rafaela. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, and uh, last but not least, Victor, which one is your favorite? Please don't say Moscow. Please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> California, my pipe dreams. <laughs> yes, yes, California. Finally, somebody else, right? <laughs> California, Pepperdine University. Right? This place, I think, looks very, very beautiful. It would be my favorite also. Um, I, I, would, I would love to go to Pepperdine, the university, to study, but to visit, my favorite is this place. Mm-hmm. I think this place is, I would visit in the, in the spring, just I, around the time that these come out, right? I was correct. I was correct with phrase pipe dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, right. This is something that you are. This is your, your, you know, it, it would be a, a dream of yours to come here. Uh, fantastic, guys, fantastic. So, um, just wanted to. Uh, we we don't have too much time left, unfortunately, guys. Uh, we were getting too too excited about these pictures, especially those ducks at Moscow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for me, those ducks. Right. But it was a great class, guys. I really appreciate it. Does anybody have any questions? A long time ago, we were talking about the past continuous. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then we started talking about universities, right? We were talking about universities. I'm sorry. We were talking about the past continuous when I started talking about universities, right? So that's, that's a perfect example for you guys right there. Um, any, any questions, guys, about the... About the Article so far, or any of these things. Oh, and Rafaela, you sent us. Uh, uh, this is. Is this your university? Rafaela, is this your university by any chance? Oh, sorry, oh. I think she was disconnected. Hey, Rafaela, thanks for the link. Is this your university? Yes, uh, it's where I stand. Nice. That's awesome. That is really, really cool, right? It says Federal University of. Itahua? Itahua? Yeah, it's, this, it's the name of the city. Uh huh. That's awesome. This place looks very, very nice too, right? This is on Christmas, so everything is all lit up. So just in two months, you guys will have this kind of scenery, right? Yes. 
beautiful. It, beautiful. Be, it, looks, it looks really amazing on Christmas. I bet. No, it looks really nice, right? That's that's awesome. All right, guys. Well, it was a pleasure to have you guys. I have another class starting right now if you guys are interested, but I know it's uh, late in some of your countries. So otherwise, I uh, hope to see you guys very soon, and thanks for a great class. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah, take care, guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.